If they don't charge the correct amount for beer, they will get drowned in the river. First paved street in the world. First song, first recipe, literally about beer. First deity, history of the world. The goddess of love, war, sex, and getting drunk on beer. First author, first poet, first recorded name in history. First signature, first city in the world. Drunk seven pitchers of beer from the earliest religious text in the history of the world. Sneaking into Saddam Hussein's house. Why not? Yeah, barricaded. Hello. 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 10 million. More. They think I'm famous. Like From what I understand, there's many bombings at liquor stores. What's the situation with that? The policeman came in and he goes like that to me. He was really not happy. It's really uh, eerie in a way. Serious security. What do you need? Like a drive-by beer place. People are telling me to get the fuck out of it. I don't understand really. We all know Iraq is a war zone. But as those tensions subsided, another war raged on, affecting a subculture nobody talks about. In recent weeks, many shops selling alcohol in the capital have been targeted in bomb attacks. Every day, he lives in fear. One shop owner was shot dead in a drive-by shooting. This mobile phone footage reportedly shows a group of men ransacking the store in Baghdad. No one has claimed responsibility for any of the attacks and no one has been brought to justice. Everyone's afraid. We don't know who's committing these attacks. Customers are scared to come to the shop, and this is the only source of money for me and my family. This liquor store owner knows his job is one of the most dangerous in Iraq. Each day, he fears for his life. We're targeted even more than the Americans. At any moment, we can be targeted by a booby-trapped car, a suicide bomb, or with a firearm. Baghdad province has almost 100 official liquor stores. In recent months, more than 30 have been attacked and the danger doesn't seem to be easing. Let's go for a beer and find out. Corny, 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 corny. Motherf I've been mortified, fortified, feeling like a Mordecai. I ain't regular, feel like Jordan wearing 45. Traumatized, victimized, seen some of my n***a die. Knock you off a base with a bat when them n***a slide. Homicide, genocide, televised, emphasize. Perpetuating war to that n***a, he gon' pick a side. Hood ties from hood lines, now n***a's doing dope lines. I'm running to the cops, to the cops, n***a exercise. Uh, they're running to the cops, that's the motto. I don't see it coming to an end like legato. N***a's get chipped like cicado. Send a wave through the hood, now it's sounding like Verado. Why you eat bread with avocado? We be trying to die shells before I land in our tomato. First city in the world. There's no one here. There was there was two tourists three days ago. Other than that, no one today. Just me. They think I'm insane. Personal ex escort with AK-47. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's because because of animals. I don't know if there's coyotes or what animals. What animals around here? Like what? So there's arguments about what's the first city, but personally, not that my opinion's worth any salt whatsoever. But it's the civilization with the first language that we know of, you can only go off what you know and what evidence you have. And personally, I think the one with the first language should hold the throne of the first 
proper city, you know? This is the best fact of the entire trip. I know I've said that, and I'm probably gonna say that continuously, but there's something called the Kushim tablet. This guy Kushim is the first name of a human being that we know of in recorded history. It's also the first signature. There's 77 tablets. The main one, the Kushim tablet, found in Uruk, found here, is the receipt of a transaction this is why it's signed. It's a signed receipt of a transaction between a brewer and supplier. So this Cushion tablet basically describes the production of beer here in the first city. But it was a receipt of like, like thousands of liters. The whole process from the brewery, what laborers were paid, the amount of barley, the transactions, the suppliers. I know it doesn't look like much. I don't know, but just standing here in the desert, call me insane, <laughs> feels, I can feel it because we know so much about beer at the time from these Kushim tablets, which is made famous, by the way, by this Yuval Harari, this, this Sapiens book, a uh, very famous book, a few years ago came out and took the world by storm. But he mentions it. He mentions about the, the beer production. The first city, not much of a city now. 5,000 years ago, that brick was placed there by a guy drunk on beer. But something even more profound, the Epic of Gilgamesh. So the Epic of Gilgamesh, which was found in the oldest library in the world, Ashnabanipal Library in Mosul. Gilgamesh was the king of Uruk, 2100 BC. It's the oldest poem, and it's the oldest religious text in the history of the world. And it's, it's now actually at the Museum of uh, the Bible in Washington DC, because so many of the stories in the Bible are mirrored and taken from the Epic of Gilgamesh. This is the dog's bollocks of, of ancient texts. It really is the oldest poem, but it's absolutely legendary. It's a classic literary piece of art. I just want to recite you a little extract. Here's one, there's many. Enkidu ate until full, drunk seven pitchers of beer, his heart grew light, face glowed, and sung with joy. Sang with joy. Seven pitchers of beer. So. I want to dispel one myth, which I think is bollocks. I keep reading everywhere that, oh, there was actually no alcohol content. Seven pitchers of beer. He danced around and sang with joy. Don't drink seven pitchers of orange juice and dance around with joy. Oh, there's a little bird. Shit. I just, just ruined its little um, nest. Sorry, mate. First written word started here. Yay. Yeah. Oh. Excavation center. Ah, rest area for excavation delegation. Closed. They must not know I'm coming. Obviously, if, I've, if I would have told them I'd come in, there'd be, there'd be a warm reception, you know? There'd be a feast, there'd be a cash day, a beer pouring. That's okay, that's okay. I'll get the reception at the next place. Good. So now I understand why we had a security guard come with us. So I just read this article on the pottery shards that are around. So similar to Abydos in Egypt, where you have these thousands of pottery shards, offerings and bread making, beer making, um, and everyday household stuff. But anyway, I was reading this article about two people who'd stolen some from Iraq and they were facing the death penalty. I don't know if that's just a, for a good headline for an article. Anyway, so I was reading a bit further and it was saying how, because these places have been looted so profusely, that's why they've got guards, but the looters often shoot at the guards. So they're actually like proper criminals, dangerous criminals. But now I understand. So it's to protect from looters, which makes a lot of sense. Just getting directions to Nasiriya. And Ur. Last location, Ur. Ur? Yeah. Ur. Good.
great ziggurat of Ur. In Ur. Built by Ur Namu. Very special, very special. Around the same time as Uruk, Uruk's similar period, similar period. The early, early Sumerian. This is a reconstruction done by Saddam Hussein. So he was a bastard. Yes, people were starving to death while he had mansions, but he liked his heritage and he rebuilt a lot of, he re rebuilt Babylon and he rebuilt this in the 80s, I think. I'll put it on screen if that's not correct. The original is, does go up to the top, which, which we can go and see. Um, and so I imagine there, there would, be, it would have been experts that reconstructed it in the way it would have looked like. Uh, Namu is the one we talked about earlier with the first code of law, contemporaneous with, almost with Code of Hammurabi and Ur Kajina. Ur is a very special place for a couple of other things, but I thought I'd just introduce you here whilst we're, so the camera doesn't explode in 50 degrees heat, you know. Salam alaikum. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go have a look, try and get to the top. Okay, let's go. Okay, I'm going, huh? Okay. Okay. We're going on an adventure. In 50 degrees heat. I don't know if this will survive, but we can try. This is a special place. This, by the way, this is not even me just finding, cherry picking the stuff about beer. Everywhere you look, there is a reference to beer within the coolest things. Not bad, not bad. I don't want to get the sun on the lens too much. Okay, so we're not going to get to the top, evidently. The first poet in the history of the world. Look, of course there was poets before, but we can only go off what we have found, you know? Enhedwana, Enhedwana is her name. Woman, female poet. So, well done chicks. <laughs> Um, and she was known as a, she was supposedly a religious cult leader at Ur and she was the first author and the first poet and she loved to write about beer. There's so many references to beer and writes almost exclusively about Anana, Ishtar. Her poems and, and texts are regarded as being deeply religious and having a profound impact on the success of religions in the world. Profound impact on the Bible, for instance. And you can look so deep into her. I'm not going to do her justice talking about her for two minutes. And here we go. The Royal Cemetery of Ur. Excavated in 1926 by Leonard Woolley. British guy. Uh, with the British Museum. And... Fuck, it must have been hot then. The most important, yet again another woman, was Queen Puabi. And it's one of the only, if not the only, fully unlooted. Most of them have been looted and stolen. That's why you have security assisting you in places, you know? But the, the artifacts found have raised so many questions about the life and culture of ancient Samaria. And so many of the artifacts in her tomb were relating to beer. So a lot of them, because it was excavated by, um, assisted by the British Museum, a lot of them are at the British Museum. Queen Puabi liked to drink beer. Her straw was found. It's a beer jug with a straw in. There's a cylinder seal with a feast where people are drinking beer and all sorts of other things. But yeah, it's really hot now, so I'm gonna have to get out of here. It's just uninhabitable. But Royal Cemetery, uh, Queen Puabi, everyone was drinking it from the tavern keepers and how there was rules and laws where you get the tavern keeper would be murdered, drowned in a pot of her own beer if she didn't provide the right amount of beer for the right price. Code of Hammurabi. The beer is talked about with the gods, the kings, and the people, the, the common people, and the laborers who are building these things. What more to say? Freddy out. In the spirit of Ur, Puabi, she died drinking beer. Golden beer straw in her hand. Let's go and get a pint. She's good. 
No, oh. a little. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. So yeah. you you're born here? Yeah, this is my house. Uh, me born in here. 100 years ago, father and grandfather worked this city, guard this city. Guard this city? Yes. Preserving guard, the ancient artifacts. Guard artifact. of war. Yeah. You know, no, no, the safety take. now uh, here, uh, guard, uh, camera, everything, mm. mm -hmm. see here. So it's safe? Safe. It would have been looted if it wasn't for this man. He protected it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so you thank him. Reni, Reni. So we're in Kish, Nehela, sort of mid-level Iraq, south of Baghdad. I don't know too much, you could delve so deep into all of this, but there's a really interesting fact that I think is hilarious. So the patron deities of Kish were Inanna and Enki. There's these things called Mies. I might be butchering the, the pronunciation here. They're, they're called, it's called a Me. <laughs> and it's like a cultural decree, and they basically hold the secrets to arts, crafts, cultures, in the civilization, and Enki was in charge of, of looking after them and guarding them. But Inanna comes along, the first deity, gets him drunk on beer, steals the Mies, takes them to Uruk, and then uses them to propagate civilization into becoming the greatest on earth. So she used beer to get him drunk and steal the secrets to civilization, of which she then used to create Samaria and then Mesopotamia and, and everything from then on, Kish. Beer. Anyway, back to Baghdad. He gave me coffee for free. Lovely man. Yeah? Man. Yeah. Very good people. So many things, just ah, just keep have have lovely. Wait. Don't film anyone. Yes. I can film myself though. Yes. Just okay. myself. Okay. No, literally, this is Alawi, the place. Alawi, we found literally everything. Um, I mean, look at the beer here. All the liquors you could possibly want. Boom, boom, boom. They love ouzo. Vodka's, grey goose. Nice hair. <laughs> Got your scotches. Your Glenfiddich, Glenfiddich even. So I was under the impression, you've got your wine, champagnes. Your tasty sugary liquors. I was under the impression that everything was secretive a little bit and, and sort of not official, you know? But this is this is like a proper supermarket for alcohol. Um, so yeah, madness, absolute madness. Pretty cool. And you got some food. Hangover food. 
Just look, just look. That's good. Hummus. Maybe later. So that's that's perfect. But it's it's always inconspicuous, look. So there's no shop sign, there's no there's no company logo, there's no sign saying that this is an alcohol shop, which is still still indicative of the evident problems, you know? So I have a I have a question. What's I read online that places get bombed. Alcohol shops get bombed a lot. And it's not in Baghdad? Yeah, many many articles on in the news say yes. many. Yes. So is this true? What's the situation now, would you say? No no. Now no? Because no. I saw one that was two years ago. That's correct. That's correct. So two years ago it's correct? Yes. And what's the area, would you say? Uh, Waziria. That was here? Uh, Waziria. 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 Karada. 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 Okay. And who, who's doing it, do you think? Uh, Government or or militias or 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 just criminals? Maybe uh, all three. All three? Yes. So you think the government have an involvement in, in bombing these alcohol shops? No, no I don't think uh, government. Uh, militia, maybe. Militia, yeah. Yes. Uh, criminal, no. Because I've also read that maybe there's some sort of mafia extortion, so they make them pay mm, pay the mafia. Yes. Otherwise, they they Mil bomb. Militia. Militia. They're like, really. Uh, how to say? How to say that? Uh, militia. Some of the militia. Yeah, we have. A many militia. Mm -hmm. A many. Many. Okay. One kind of militia don't want to open like this place. Mm -hmm. Alcohol. Thing. Yeah. Like, is it religious motivated? R motivated by religious or political or just money? Really, I don't know. I don't know. I don't drink. No, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's just I, I find it fascinating because it's it's legal, but not good. So it's an interesting contradiction. Yes. You know. Yeah, I know. It's allowed, but not allowed. Allowed, <laughs> allowed from government, not allowed from the people. Yes. Um, but there's big. Not big, all people. Huh? Not all people. Not all people. But, so there's that must be why that there's no sign outside saying this is an alcohol shop. Yes. That must be why. Yeah. Also. Also, what was going to say? If you if you if you go to Karada, you saw many many mm. many alcohol, many signs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Many shops. Okay. Yes, many shops. What's what's the name? Dijla. Dijla River. This sort of separates Baghdad in two, pretty much. So he said it's okay to drink this. I saw there's there's problems with people who drink in public. Yeah. There's many fines. It's okay. It's okay for you. It's, for me, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Little stop on the river in Baghdad. A little beer. So it's really not what you think it is. It seems to be very chilled. I had to use my GoPro because it's. I look like I look like a bloody journalist when I pull the big camera out. A little bit of a red flag for people. What the, what, are you, what are you trying to film, you know? It's not just a vlog. Hello. Hello. How are you? They just put. It's like a drive-by. Like a drive-by beer place. Look. Hello. <laughs> How much? How are you? How are you? Hello. Good. 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 Ahmed? Ah, it's good. Three thousand. How are you? So what are you doing? What are you doing? One, two. Ah, you're a Muslim. I am. You're a Christian. Three thousand. Three thousand. 
So look. There's no access. Someone look in the hand. Anything, is it? Can I look inside? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Is it? Wanna have a quick look? Is it? It's okay. Nah. 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 Look at this. There's a Glenn Fiddick sign. Shukran, shukran. So th this one's got a sign. Glenn Fiddick. Of course, Glenn Fiddick, the best whiskey in the world. Um, as much as I hate to admit it, it's Scottish. Uh, so it's got the sign, but it's also, you know, got security measures just a little bit. <laughs> so you've got a little hole like this, look. It's okay. Hello. Hello. That's that's some serious uh that's some serious okay. content there. <laughs> so why not all open? Not all open? It's crazy that they have one, two, three, four. I can go. Oh let's go, let's go. Shook down, how are you? Go. Hello. How are you? This ring. I like this ring, it's nice. Iraqi ring. Just a quick look. That's crazy. Why? Do you, do you speak English? A little bit. English or? No. No, okay. Uh, my baby, English. Your yeah, baby, English. Really? American. American? Yeah. Nice. Why so, so much security? No, uh, what a bar. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is there big bars here? Why? After Muharram. After. Okay. It's a problem. People people try and steal. Or no. So look, look all around. It's got everything. Literally everything you could possibly imagine. I've only been in like smaller ones recently, but this is this is substantial. Love it. Love it. Shukran, shukran. Hello. Hello. Didn't get the answers I want still, but they're less offended by the GoPro. You've got to use the GoPro in places like this because people, it's a bit of a red flag when you use these massive. Shukran, shukran. On to the next place. fish there is just bam, twat it on its head, throw it on the fire and cook it right in front of it. What's the most fish they have on here at any time? Oh, 24. 100? <laughs> 34. 34? Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, I was thinking it's so big. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, busy. Very busy. Yeah. Huh? Now, not so, not so busy. No. But Thursday night, huh? Because people at the nightclub not not eating fish. <laughs> so because because tomorrow's the day off, and it's a three day long weekend. People are. <laughs> people are. People go crazy tonight. It's so busy. It's basically like a, a three day weekend in the UK. If you've got a bank holiday Monday, the Sunday night is always mental. It's the same for Thursday night here. Iraqi way. Iraqi way. way. This Masgu. 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 Yeah. Masgu. Two way. Two way. Wash or in in the blood. In the blood. Yes. Yes. Sometimes uh, people want uh, wash after. Washing in the water. Another people, no, don't wash. I want in in, in fish blood. The flavor. The yeah, blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes wash, sometimes not wash. Keep the flavor yeah. of the fish. I like the back. No You like no wash. No. no. Yeah, because you get that sea, the flavor of the I, sea. I, you know. I am a blood. <laughs> you like the blood. <laughs> Bam! Woo! <laughs> mm. 
Nice. <laughs> get my kiss. Plus 18. <laughs> okay, I feel bad now. Let him, let him uh, go back. Listen, you know? He was sleeping, he just I pulled out and started to kiss me, though. 10,000 kilos. Kilo. Okay, he's. he's, he's... <laughs> <laughs> It's still alive, but they're frozen. And when you defrost it, it's alive again, they put it back. But like a bear, you know? Like a bear in the winter. Inside. Look at this. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Serious security though. Serious security. I can't, they let me in, it's so friendly. Just have a little look around. Look at all this. Look at the look at the stock. It's like some old warehouse. It's almost it's almost not like an official shop. And these massive doors, like look at the locks on them. Boom, boom, boom. The locks, little window, like that's so funny. Look at the cameras. Boom. They love this ouzo, this Greek ouzo. So let's get a little beer. Ah, oh, two balls, two balls, good actually. Two balls, let's get one. Oh. This one. Okay. Shukra. Should be about three usually. No, I'm not having a Okay. Four. It's alright. Okay. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. What do you need? <laughs> okay. Job finished. Special entrance. Official. Hello. Salam alaikum. There's another one as well. So you go up to this little door, this little entrance, and get your. Beautiful. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Ah, right, see you later. Take care. Huh? Freddy. Freddy? What's your name? Hello. Ahmed. 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 Look at the hair. Look at the okay. teeth. Ahmed. I'm so jealous. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, let's go. Okay. I'm getting used to the kissing. People like to kiss here. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I thought it was just too friendly. No. But no problem. It's no, you, no, it, no. I think everyone does does oh, this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Quite inconspicuous, so there's no sign, and you'll notice like old guys, young guys, middle-aged guys, women, everyone. Everyone goes in. I was stood there for about an hour, maybe two hours. About 300 people went through. Cheers. It's not as bad as you think it is. What they do is these in the freezer. They've got these like water bottles that are half, maybe a third full of ice. They go and get the ice. They pour the whiskey in, and then they throw the bottle away. Then they take it out. Or if you're drinking beer, they're in black plastic bags and then they hide in the corner like this. Cheers, cheers mate, cheers. <laughs> Shukran, Habibi. Everyone's come up to me saying, you're gonna get robbed. I'm like, really? Like, this is a busy street. I feel safe. People people have a good vibe. I don't understand, really. I booked a taxi anyway, I'm gonna go home. Because literally, people are running out of the shops telling me, you can't stay here after. Everyone's, everywhere's closing, you can't stay here. So, okay. okay. Habibi, Shukran. Okay. He's, he's praying for me. <laughs> I, I've not felt any hostility whatsoever. It seems hard to believe because people are so nice and friendly here, so I don't know. So I'm just back home now, playing a bit of chess with my two bog, grabbed a bit of food. So even the taxi driver, as I was coming back, when I put the camera away, he translated, what were you saying to the camera? And I said, my friends told me that it's really dangerous there and that you should leave. And he's like, yeah, you, you can't stay there. It's such a dangerous place to stay overnight. I'm like, why? Because I'm a tourist? He's like, no. Um, <laughs> the taxi driver as well said that, so yeah.